Check out this little line. Okay, so this is a uh, what well, this is what we're going to be talking about today. I'm gonna it's a John Schofield line. I'm gonna show you it and show you how to extract like different ideas and things you can get from it. Okay, so what that line that lines over the first bit of the rhythm changes. Now the chord progression, very briefly, is just B flat major, G7, C minor seven, F seven, D minor seven flat five. G7, C minor 7, F7, B flat. Okay, now, <clears throat> the interesting thing about the line is he kind of outlines, he targets kind of really really strong notes on each of, the, each of the chords. So check out, he starts out like this. So it's just kind of up and down a little, a little run really, but the, the, that D note, is happening right on the beat of the of the B flat. So if you just get the B flat bass note on its own and that D note, that gives you the harmony. So th he's doing a really kind of important thing, which is using the thirds of the chords on the downbeat. So where the chord changes, usually what you'll find is there'll be a strong note that happens just at that point. So you've got on the B flat. And then he hits this B note, which goes on the G7 chord, and that's the third of the G7. So that's a strong, again, that's a strong note on the G. So immediately, he's only played a couple of notes, but um, he's kind of outlining the changes using using the thirds. So you've got, and then for this C minor, he hits the root, and then. It's the third of the eight of the F7 chord. Okay, so that's that first little bit. <clears throat> then it goes D minus seven flat five this time, and he uses this A flat, which is the the, the kind of most important note on this chord, really, the most the most characteristic note, the flat five. So. So and then he goes. So that's again. This is the same thing is happening. So uh, a strong note on the chord, and then that B, which we've seen before in this octave, and that's the third of the G seven chord. Uh, a couple of notes of the C minor. move again and that's the third of the F7 chord so a bit more of that kind of uh, just hitting the thirds so okay so in the second half of that line um, you can sort of look at it as two levels you know the, the under level um, is the bit where you've got this important movement of the seventh going to the third. So you just, that's the seventh of the D minor chord, that's C, going to the third of the G chord, which is the B. And then the third, the seventh of the C minor chord, did I say C minor before? I meant D minor. Seventh of the C minor, going to the third of the F. But on top, you've got these two notes so that's on the G seventh chord and that is sharp nine to flat nine so on the top you've got the extensions and in the bottom you've got the the kind of meat and potatoes the, the thing that really tells you what the chord is the third and the seventh okay and then he uses this note which is a flat nine uh, on the F chord so again, you've got the, that kind of, uh, the extensions, the color notes kind of on top. Okay, and ends on the fifth of the B flat chord. So that, that's kind of briefly what's happening with the, um, with the line harmonically. Now what I want you to do is, or what I want to show you is how you can sort of 
um, simplify what's going on so that you can create your own lines based off of that. 